As a good old fashioned warm blooded American, there is nothing I love more in the world than working with your hands, CNC, and living the American dream. So in this video, we are launching the first ever Cutting It Close kit so you guys can make this project. This is huge, this is awesome. Let's get right to it. I'm excited, let's go. So a little background on why I chose to do this Eagle for the very first Cutting It Close kit. It is July, and so July the 4th is obviously American independence, but it's also the 250th anniversary of the American Revolution and the 249th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. And I would not be able to do what I do, love what I do, and chase the American dream if I did not live in America, so I only thought it was right to make one of these for the very first kit because I am so blessed to live in the country I live in and be able to do what I do. Now, if you did get the kit, you should have received these five things right here. You should receive a piece of super glue. You should have a six and a half by four inch piece of yellow, black, yellow quarter inch, red, white, red quarter inch, nine and a half by nine and a half, and another piece of blue, white, blue quarter inch, nine and a half by nine and a half, and also, a half inch piece 16 by 16 of black white black the other thing you should receive with this kit is a digital file with a step-by-step -step guide of the vectors and the tool pass that we're going to be using what this kit did not come with are the bits that you're going to use to cut out this project and so the majority of this project will be cut out using an eighth inch o flute bit and why we're using an eighth inch o flute is because it is the best bit to cut plastic. And we do have one optional bit in here whenever we get to these stars later on, and that's going to be a 16th of an inch upcut, which is a very, very tiny upcut. But once again, you wanna use that upcut because we are cutting out plastic. So if you have an eighth inch upcut, and a 16th of an inch upcut, you have everything you need, so let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna be cutting out on this eagle is we're actually going to be cutting out all the colored parts first. The reason we're going to do that is whenever we do this eagle last, you want to make sure these parts fit in these pockets that we're going to cut. And if you were to do this eagle first and then cut out the parts, you may have wasted this whole entire thing. And this piece is not cheap, so we do not want to waste it. So we're going to cut out all the parts first, starting with this yellow, which is for the beak the eye and the under beak. So the very first piece we'll be cutting out is a six and a half by four inch piece of yellow, black, yellow. And I'll be marking all the centers of every one of these with a little bit of tape because pens and pencils do not like to write on plastic so much. And this whole entire project, I will be using a center origin. That'll just make all these different size pieces a lot easier to run. So as far as hold down goes, when you're working with HDPE and especially small parts of HDPE, you know, it, it kind of self lubricates. So it, it doesn't, there's not a lot of friction that holds everything down. So I'm gonna be using T-slot clamps in this video to hold everything down. But if you do have double-sided tape, it does actually work really well to hold down this HDPE. I use X-Fasten, you can get it on Amazon. It works really well. But for the sake of y'all guys who don't have it, I'm gonna be clamping it down just with some basic T-slots. And you just wanna make sure it doesn't move hold down whatever way you can, just make sure it doesn't slip and slide. All right, so to set up this beak, I'm just taking these vectors and I'm just going to center them in my project. And then we'll be using the first two tool paths, which is a pocket then a profile. So we'll be pocketing out these two parts right here and then doing a profile around these three parts, cutting them all out. And we are using tabs because these things are small. That's why double-sided tape will actually help a little bit. We got the yellow, black, yellow cut out, you know, really quick tool path. I am running it at 100 inches a minute, but you can go down to 50 inches a minute with that eighth inch bit. You're gonna be fine if you don't wanna run your CNC that fast. And I did leave these tabs on here because I can just go back with my razor and cut them off and cut out this part and it's not gonna be a big issue. 
So I did do tabs for that reason and just a really quick snip snip and we are good to go. So we got the little pieces cut out. If those tabs are too thick for you, I do have them set a little thicker, but if you wanna make them thinner, go right ahead and edit the tabs on any of the following profiles to make them a little thinner. So the next thing we're gonna cut out are these stripes out of this nine and a half inch by nine and a half inch red, white, red. So I'm gonna get that held down and we'll start cutting. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is step two, which is these stripes right here. And if you're using V-Carve or Aspire, just hit F9 and it's gonna center that project. And we're using toolpath number three, the stripes profile. Now, if you do notice, I did leave a little bit of space in the center. And so right on that center point right here, you can actually put a screw down. And the reason that screw might be helpful if you're not using double-sided tape is this plastic does like to pick up a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little screw right there. You, you can, you don't have to, everything's gonna be okay. I'm just doing it to show you all the different methods possible. So the screw definitely helped on this because these pieces do want to pick up a little bit. And keep in mind, once again, these parts are really small. And so I do like doing tabs. Just be careful when you're cutting off the tabs so you don't cut yourself. And see how this picks up? I'm actually going to go back into the program and add a tab right there for you guys because this hasn't happened to me yet but it is important to keep these pieces right here from moving back and forth. So let me get all these cut out and then we'll talk about the next piece. So to come out with this kit took a lot of work and hundreds of hours of kind of getting everything together, making sure everything functions, making this video for you guys. Our goal is for you to press go on your CNC. So if you do have different kit ideas, let me know in the comments below. I don't care if they use special hinges or special parts. I just want people creating because it's beautiful. Let me know your thoughts because this will be a monthly thing and I'm very, very excited for it because nobody else is doing this. So, so the next piece we're gonna be using is this quarter inch blue. It's also nine and a half inches by nine and a half inches. So let me get this blue held down. We'll mark the center again at that four and three quarters by four and three quarters and start cutting the stars and stripes. All right, the next thing we're gonna run is step three and this is gonna be the stars. And so we're just gonna put that in the center. Now here is where that 16th of an inch bit comes in handy. And so these stars right here, and I'll show you, if you're doing them with an eighth inch bit, it's gonna be a little bit more rounded and stuff like that. If you decide to use that 16th inch bit, you'll see how much more pointy these stars get. I'm going to be using the 16th inch O flute to do these stars first, then we'll come back with that eighth inch bit and cut out the profile. So I'll be running this 16th of an inch bit on my machine at 50 inches a minute and 25 on the plunge. And I will say, be careful on your clamps on the corner. When we do that profile cut, it is gonna get a little bit close to the corner. These two clamps, the bottom right and the top left have plenty of room, but these two have a little bit less room. So just kind of note that so you don't hit the clamp. All right, the 16th inch bit did really good. I just put the eighth inch bit back in there. There's no need to reset the X and Y origin. I'm just gonna do the Z height because it's a different bit. All right, blue cut out really well. One thing to note, if there's any little fuzzies in there, or any little pieces, 
You can either use like a nylon brush from Harbor Freight, something like that. Also, if you have an old toothbrush, you can go in there and kind of clean up some of these fuzzies and an old toothbrush works really well. So little tip there. So I'll get this cut out and then we'll start cutting out the big one. All right, we got our black, white, black on. The piece should be 16 by 16, which means the center point is at eight and eight. And this is going to be a half inch thick material. So be sure you reset your Z height because you don't want to carve halfway through it. Now over here on the programming side, what we're going to do is step four, which is this massive eagle part. And it should fit right into your job if you set up a 16 inch by 16 inch job right there. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is this big eagle pocket. And so right here are the vectors you select. And if you did get it from VCarve Pro or anything like that, they should already be grouped. But if not, these are the vectors that you select. So we should be able to go over here, select them all right there. And what this is going to do, going to pocket out everything just like that. Once we do this, and this is gonna take a little bit, we're gonna come back with this deeper pocket for the stars and stripes. And what this is going to do is gonna pocket out all those indentions for our pieces so they fit in there. So if I grab this other piece right here, you can see that they have these little indentions. And so the first tool path is gonna take everything off. The second one is just gonna carve these indentions in a little bit deeper. And so second one is going to be those vectors right here. And then we're going to come back and the cut depth is gonna be 0.15 inches because we want those to be a little bit deeper than the previous pocket. And whenever you run those, it's going to look just like that and you can see those indentions. So we're gonna do all that with the eighth inch bit and then that is our last program on the CNC that will run. So I'm gonna to touch this off, re-Z hide it because it is a thicker material and then we're gonna do that big, big pocket that's gonna give us all that detail on the eagle. Now before I run this, because that eighth inch bit is doing a ton of pocketing, yes, you could technically use a quarter inch O flute and come in here and clean it all up and then run that eighth inch bit. I'm not gonna do that because I said you only needed the eighth inch bit, but you could definitely do that and use the quarter inch as that bigger area tool clearance. Now I will say, I am going to up the step over to 80% to see what kind of results it yields. But whenever you're milling HTPE, a lesser step over is going to get you a little bit better bottom finish. So a 40% step over at 100 inches a minute with this machine takes about 25 minutes and an 80% step over takes about 15 minutes. And so I'm gonna do the 80% step over method. Now, let's get to cutting. All right, I just stopped the machine because it wasn't cutting all the way through that black layer right there, as you can see. So if this happens, just either A, set your Z height a little bit deeper, or B, in your program, instead of going down 0 0.07, go down 0 0.08 or 0 0.09, all will be okay if that does happen. So for me, I'm just gonna set my bit just a little bit deeper and rerun the toolpath. All right, so this is how the eagle looks after that first big pocket. 
Now we're gonna go with those deeper pockets. And the reason we're doing those deeper pockets are so those pieces right here, these pieces right here, actually fit in those grooves. Now to make sure they fit in, you want to have a pocket allowance there. On my program, I left a negative 0.005 inch pocket allowance, and that's going to allow these to snap in there. But this is the whole entire reason we're doing this last is because if that pocket that we're about to do this a little deeper does not work, we can always make that pocket allowance bigger, right? And then make sure our pieces fit because you don't want to end up cutting out this eagle, cutting out the pieces, and none of the pieces fit, right? I love your business. I'd love for you to buy another kit, but I don't want you to screw up a project. So we're going to cut out those deeper pockets with a negative 0.005 pocket allowance, and then we're going to make sure these fit before we ever touch it and take it off the CNC. Deeper pockets are cut. Let's see if our pieces fit. So first little piece, boom, snaps on in. Let's test out the beak. Boom, snaps on in. The lower beak jaw line thing, put in the eye. All right, cool. So all of this should now just kind of fit in place just like that with CNC level precision. All right, so if all of your pieces fit like this, it's time for the glue. And this is just a plastic super glue that I bought from Walmart for like five bucks. Just dropped it in y'all's box. Um, it's gonna have an activator and a bonder. And so with this type of plastic, it usually doesn't adhere to anything because it has very low surface tension, if I'm not mistaken. And so you need some kind of an activator to start it melting almost. All right, so how this activator and glue work, is you rub it, the activator, on both pieces. So I'll rub it on this red piece right here. And then I'll also go back and rub it on the inside right here in the white. And this activator starts kind of chemically melting that HDPE. And because HDPE has such a low surface tension, you have to melt it to itself or use a screw. Um, and this is the cheapest possible glue. I say cheapest. Cheapest and it actually works glue that I could find, everything else is really expensive. So once I do that, I got the activator on both pieces, put a little bit of glue on it, a little bit of stuff on the back, not too much, because I did learn if it goes on the black, it will leave a white little mark. And boom, and according to the instructions, I hold it down for about 10 seconds. Okay, so hold it down and it does not come out or up. I do not know how long this glue lasts. I don't know if it lasts outside for 50 years. I just know it holds together this plastic and it's been doing it pretty good for me. Now, once you're done with the gluing, the project is complete. It can go inside, outside, wherever you want. I want to encourage y'all guys that completed this kit to post on our Facebook group. I'll leave a link in the description. That way you can show off what you did, talk to everybody else that's also building these, and we can grow that community of CNC builders that don't just talk the talk, they actually walk the walk, which I am super excited about. So let me know if this style of video really helped you, if I need to slow down more, speed up more, if it puts you to sleep. I need to know everything. I love you guys. I love this great country we live in. And as always, remember, if you ain't cutting it close, you ain't cutting it right.